In this video, I'd like to talk about a special class of discrete time controllers called deadbeat control. It's an idea that doesn't really have an analog in continuous time, and it's quite interesting. So we'll start with a plant of, uh, of the form g of z is equal to b of z over a of z, and as usual, we'll assume that uh, the degree of the denominator will denote n, the degree of the numerator will denote m. We'll assume that it's uh, um, causal system, so n is greater than or equal to m, um, and we'll apply a controller, uh, d of z is equal to y of z over x of z, uh, the degree of the denominator is i, the degree of the numerator is j, and we'll assume that the controller is, uh, is causal, and so um, i is greater than or equal to j. So applying this in the standard closed loop, we have t of z is equal to um, g of z d of z over 1 plus g of z d of z. This is the transfer function from the reference input r uh, to the measured output y. Um, and inserting the expressions for g and d, um, we can write that in terms of uh, the polynomials in the numerator and the denominator of of g and d, as we've done here. Um, we can also write the transfer function from the reference input um, to the, uh, the control u, uh, and that's going to be interesting in the derivation to come. Um, so that was the sensitivity s u of z, um, and that's just d of z over 1 plus g of z d of z, which we can write out this way. Okay, so the fundamental idea of deadbeat control um, is to prescribe the closed loop transfer function t of z to be of a very special form. We're going to take um, t of z, so the idea is this. We're going to take t of z um, as being some numerator g of z over a special denominator z to the l, um, and we're going to take the degree of the numerator, the degree of g of z to be less than or equal to L, um, and uh, so that assures that our um, closed loop system is, of course, um, causal. Um, and so um, if we t follow this approach, then something very special happens. So let's go ahead and calculate um, the, uh, the step response, and so T of z is uh, the transfer from function from R of z to Y of z, so we can write um, Y of z as equal to um, t of z times r of z. And so we'll take our, our t of z um, as being g of z um, over z to the l, which is our fundamental idea of deadbeat control. And uh, we'll take a, a, a unit step, so if we take a look at the uh, um, table of, uh, of z transforms. The z transform of the unit step is just z over z minus 1. Um, and so then we can calculate um, the, uh, the partial fraction expansion uh, of y of z, um, and, uh, and we can um, do the inverse z transform, and so we can see what that signal looks like. So let's take some example. So let's take um, our g of z uh, as being um, just a, uh, a first order polynomial, so g1 of z plus g0. Um, and let's take our L to be um, 2. So we have a um, strictly causal uh, um, T of z uh, as, a, uh, as a prescribed transfer function here. Um, and let's just go ahead and multiply it out. And so um, our y of z uh, will equal um, g1 z plus g0 um, times z. So let me go ahead and times the z. This goes in there. Um, and the uh, denominator um, is z to the l times um, z minus 1. So we have z to the l is, is um, z squared times z minus 1. Um, and so we can just do our, uh, our partial fraction expansion. Um, so we can write this um, as um, d1 over z plus d2 over z squared um, plus d3 over um, z minus 1. Um, and if we uh, go ahead and uh, let's see, multiply uh, this times z squared over z squared, multiply this one times z minus 1 over z minus 1, multiply this one times z times z minus 1 
over z times z minus 1. So we uh, get the common denominator and all of those things. Um, and then we um, set the powers, uh, the coefficients of like powers of z on the right side equal to, uh, to the left side. Um, then we can get a system of three equations and three unknowns and solve for d1 and d2 and d3 in terms of g1 and g0. So go ahead and do that now. Um, and um, what you'll get I'm um, correct to uh, check me to make sure I did it correctly. Um, what you get is d2 is equal to 0, um, d1 is equal to minus g, and uh, I'm not sorry, minus g0, um, and uh, then d3 is equal to um, g1 plus g0. So go ahead and check me and make sure I did that correctly. Um, so let's see, d2 is equal to 0, so actually this one goes away. Um, and so then if we take the um, inverse z transform, then what we have is um, yk um, is equal to um, d1. So again, do, looking in the table of z transforms, so we find 1 over z in the table of z transforms. We find this is just delta 1k um, plus um, then the, uh, the, the response uh, due to, to this one um, is just d3 times h1k. Um, so um, in this case, what happens uh, at the um, zeroth time step, um, the, uh, the, the response is just what it was prior. At the first time step, something special happens because you have this term, which is just a, a impulse at, uh, at the, the first time step. Um, and this is a step um, which happens from the first time step and beyond. Um, and so something special ha happens at the first time step um, and at the second time step and thereafter, it's just constant. And so the response of the system settles in finite time. That's why I said this approach doesn't really have an analog in continuous time because everything in continuous time exponentially decays and as you push the poles farther and farther into the left half plane the exponential decay gets faster and faster but you never get exactly to the uh, the infinite time value in finite time but in this case you do which is um, which is quite interesting and that's the the idea of deadbeat control is that if you get all of the poles of your closed loop system at the origin then there is no gradual decay after some finite number of steps, you're there. And so in the Olympics, you would say you've stuck the landing. You're just, boom, right there in a finite time. Um, and so um, we'd like to, uh, to, to pursue this idea a little bit. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to start with, uh, with this equation, and I'm going to solve it for d. Um, and so um, turning this equation around, solving for d in terms of t and g, um, is straightforward to do. Um, and so what we get is um, d of z is equal to um, 1 over g of z um, times t of z over um, 1 minus t of z. And uh, so we can uh, go ahead and plug in. We have our uh, expression for g of z and our expression um, for t of z. So we have our expression for t of z there our expression for g of z there. So we'll go ahead um, and, uh, and plug that in um, to, to these factors. Um, and what we get um, is um, well, 1 over g of z then is just going to be a of z over b of z. Um, and then plugging in the, the, the t of z is just going to give us um, g of z over um, z to the l um, minus g of z. So we'll call that our, our d of z again. So this is going to be our y of z over x of z. And as we've uh, discussed, we're going to um, indicate the degree of the numerator as j and the degree of the denominator um, as i. OK, so um, that is a expression then for d of z that um, that falls out from the fact that we're prescribing what t of z is. Um, and so now 
we just have some simple choices to make. What should we use for L and what should we use for G of Z? Um, and then if we want our closed loop transfer function uh, to, uh, to, to have a form like that, this is the D of Z that's going to give us that. So we're going to consider a few examples. Uh, before we, uh, we consider the examples, um, let's take a look at what we need for the controller to be causal. Um, so for causality, um, so for the causality, uh, what we need um, is the order of the denominator to be greater than or equal to the order of the numerator. So the order of the denominator um, is, um, let's see, the order of this term is L because we're taking the order of uh, the degree of G as being uh, less than or equal to L. So this is L. Um, and uh, so the degree of, of this one, the degree of B of Z, um, we've taken as being m, so l plus m um, has to be greater than or equal to um, the degree of the numerator. So the degree of the numerator um, is the uh, degree of a is n, so the degree of a of z is n um, plus the degree of um, G of Z, which is so far unspecified, uh, and in our examples we'll consider a few, a few different possibilities. Um, and so um, we need that, um, or we can swing this term over to the right hand side with a minus in front of it. So we have, um, let's just write that out, L is greater than or equal to N minus M plus the degree of G of Z. Right. And so when we want to find the uh, deadbeat controller that settles in the shortest time possible, like the best Olympic gymnasts, um, then uh, we want to take L as equal to um, this, uh, um, this right hand side. And so we'll take D as being just um, semi-causal. Um, if, uh, if we uh, want to allow ourselves uh, a little more time to get the job done, we can uh, take um, L as being strictly causal. We can take L as being greater than this. Uh, but for the rest of the derivation here, we'll take L as being um, semi-causal. So I'm actually going to take equality right here. Okay, so, uh, so that's something that we're, we're going to need is uh, uh, for, for causality. Um, and so strict causality um, is, uh, um, is going to have a, uh, a greater than sign right there. Um, and uh, if we want to make it semi-causal, um, we'll have an equal sign there. And so we'll, we'll choose the equal sign. Okay, so, uh, okay, so um, now what I want to do is I, I want to um, look at one more property that we're going to need before we consider our examples. Um, and that is we want um, to step, we want to put an input into this thing and we want to get um, an output um, that, that eventually hits the reference value. Um, so we want zero steady state error to a step. So zero steady state error um, to a step input. So we're going to need to appeal to the discrete time final value theorem, uh, which was uh, in discrete time we had the limit as k goes to infinity um, of y sub k um, is equal to um, the limit um, as z goes to zero. Um, uh, sorry, uh, the limit as z goes to one um, of uh, z minus one times y of z. So you go back and check your notes for the discrete time final value theorem, um, and uh, and we, we got that. Um, and so uh, then plug in y of z. We have an expression for y of z right here. Um, so we can go ahead and plug that in. So we have um, the limit as z goes to 1 um, of, um, let's see, z minus 1 times y of z, um, which is right here. So we have um, g of z, g of z um, over z to the l um, times 
um, z over z minus 1. So that term cancels with that term. Um, and so um, the limit as z goes to 1 of this is just g of 1. And so uh, for, uh, for taking um, the limit as k goes to infinity of y sub k equaling 1, we need um, g of 1 to also equal 1. Okay? Um, and so we need, we're going to need g of 1 to be 1, and we're going to need L to be greater than or equal to, and we'll choose equal to, um, n minus m plus degree of g. And so now it's just a matter of prescribing g of z and L and seeing what falls out. And, and so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Um, and so the first um, controller that I'm going to develop um, is what I'll call a minimum time deadbeat controller. So the minimum time deadbeat controller. Um, uh, and we'll be able to do this um, for plants which are stable and, uh, and minimum phase. So we're going to take uh, g of z as being stable and minimum phase. And what we're going to uh, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to take t of z is equal to uh, g of z. We're just going to take as one and uh, over z to the l. So in other words, we've taken um, g of z. Um, as being equal to 1 in this case. Um, and so um, what do we need for causality? We need L to be greater than or equal to um, N minus M um, plus the degree of G, and the degree of G is 0. So we need L to be greater than um, N minus M. All right, and so now we can just calculate what D of Z is. We have an expression for it. Um, so D of Z um, is simply equal to um, a of z over b of z times g of z, which is 1, over um, z to the l um, minus 1. So that's the controller that gives you um, that minimum time deadbeat controller. Um, and so uh, that, again, we'll just uh, use the letters y of z and, uh, and x of z for the numerator and denominator. And so that gets the output to settle in finite time. <coughs> so if we consider an example problem, so let's take an example um, of the form, say, uh, g of z um, is equal to um, b1 z plus b0 over um, z squared uh, plus a1z plus a0, right? So we're taking m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. Um, all right, so that's, uh, that's our, uh, a, a reasonable example. Um, and so um, if m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2, then our l in this case um, is equal to 2 minus 1 is 1, which means that in the in, in this example, if we apply the minimum time controller, um, the, uh, the output settles in exactly one step. So after, so here's the first time step, the second time step, the third time step, the fourth time step. And so after one time step, uh, we've got our final value, and then all the remaining final values I like that. So it appears in discrete land in, in discrete time that we've stuck the landing. That in exactly one time step, uh, we are at our final value, which is pretty remarkable. Um, but there is more to the story here. Um, and so if we take a look at um, SU of Z, 
um, which we have a formula for right here. And so we have um, A of Z and B of Z and X of Z and Y of Z. So we can go ahead and plug them in. Um, and so our, I'll just write to A of Z for now. Um, y of Z um, is A of Z um, over, uh, let's see, A of Z times X of Z, which is X of Z is B of Z times z to the l minus 1, um, and then plus b of z times y of z, and again y of z is a of z. Um, so I've got an a of z um, in all of these terms, so that goes away. And so I have a minus b of z and a b of z, so that term and that term goes away. Um, and so we see that this is just equal to um, a of z um, over b of z um, times z to the l. Okay, and so there's a problem here, is that uh, the, um, the output of the system settles in finite time um, as we've argued here, when we, uh, when we have all of our poles of our transfer function at the origin, then if you go ahead and calculate the response of the system, you get settling in a finite time. Um, and in this case, with L is equal to one, we'll settle in one time step. In this case, we had L is equal to two, we settled in two time steps. Um, and uh, so we settle um, the, uh, the reference output in finite time, uh, but remember SU is the transfer function from R to U, um, and we see that the, the transfer function from R to U does not settle in finite time. So there is a Z to the L in the denominator, okay, so that's fine, but there's a B of Z. We've assumed that the system is minimum phase, um, so the B of Z, um, the, the zeros um, of, of G of Z are all in the left half plane, so this is stable, that's fine, um, but they're not at the origin necessarily. And so um, the, uh, um, the control U, so let me write it, um, the control U, so this is U of Z, over R of Z. So we put a reference input in, and the U of Z is going to be changing, um, and uh, it's not going to settle on finite time. So if I take a look at what happens to U in this example here, um, there's my first time step, second time step, third time step, etc. Um, and um, we have a, uh, we, we've taken equal sign here, so we have a semi-proper D, so it responds right away at the zeroth time step. So we hit it at the zeroth time step, um, then we hit it at the next time step, we hit it at the next time step, and the next time step, and the next time step, and B of Z is stable, and so this is eventually going to, um, going to converge, um, but um, the control is, uh, is, is going to um, keep moving in time. And remember, um, in continuous time, so if we are considering our plant as coming from, uh, as coming from a continuous time sy system that we have a digital analog converter and an analog to digital converter in front and in back of, and so if our, our plant um, G of Z comes from a, a G of S that we have and a uh, digital to analog converter uh, with a zero order hold in front of and uh, analog to digital converter in back of. Um, and so if we say the transfer function of that whole thing is what we called this G of Z. And so for whatever our uh, our G of S is, say we uh, calculated the um, transfer function of this cascade of three components and we got a corresponding G of Z in this form. Um, and uh, so um, what's really going on inside our system is there is a zero order hold going on here. So this is held and then this is held, this is held. Etc. And then eventually it's going to settle down to something. Um, and uh, so we are um, 
controlling the system in just the right way that at the output times, the, uh, the, the values of the output look as if the system is not moving. But before um, you sample it, so if you take a look at the continuous time uh, signal right here, um, the, the y of t before you sample it to get the y sub k. Um, so um, this is the, the input here is u sub k and the output here is y sub k. But inside we have a u of, sorry, we have a y of t um, here, and we have a u of t there. So here I'm plotting um, u versus t. And so the samples um, are the u sub k, and the lines are the u of t. And up here we're plotting y versus t, and so far we've just plotted the samples y sub k. Um, but uh, um, what we're doing is we're taking uh, a u of t and we're putting it into a continuous time system and the control is going like that to it. And so what happens is that induces a ripple. Um, and so it's what the continuous time system y of t is actually doing is rippling in response to these oscillations. And so there's this uh, um, y of t um, and so this oscillation is called intersample ripple. Intersample ripple. And uh, obviously that's um, not a desirable effect to have that oscillation going on in there. Um, and so um, we would like to des develop a controller that doesn't ripple like that. Um, and so in discrete time it settles in finite time, but indeed in continuous time you don't have this excitation by a control which is banging back and forth uh, making y of t oscillate between the time steps uh, to form that ripple. Um, and so what we can do is in addition to having t of z have this form where all of its um, poles are in the denominator. We're going to insist that um, the transfer function from R to U also has all of its poles at the origin. And this didn't achieve that. This put some of those poles uh, where the zeros of, of G of Z were, which in general are not at, at, the, uh, at the origin. And so what we can do is we can develop something called a ripple-free deadbeat controller. So the ripple-free case, um, and this is going to apply uh, for stable G of Z. Um, remember up here, um, we had to assume that G of Z was uh, stable and minimum phase. Um, now we're going to assume that uh, G of Z, uh, we're just going to need stability. Um, and so we're going to take, in this case, um, T of Z as being um, B of Z. So we, we have some flexibility in the choice of G of Z in this deadbeat controller idea. Um, and so at the beginning I just kind of arbitrarily took it to 1 and that allowed me uh, to choose a very small value of L. So in this particular example I could choose L is equal to 1. But now I want to uh, relax that a little bit and let's, let's um, allow there to be uh, some other dynamics, some other zeros in, in, in the numerator here. So let's take the numerator as being say a normalized value of, of B of Z um, over Z to the L. Um, and so, um, again, remember that we need g of 1 to be 1 in order to have zero steady state error to step input. Um, and so our numerator is b of z over b of 1, uh, and so, um, so that's normalized, and so we get zero steady state error. So we're fine on the steady state error. Um, and so now what I'm going to do um, is, uh, is um, evaluate this case. So again, our L has got to be greater than uh, or equal to um, n minus m plus the degree of g. The degree of g is, uh, is again, m, um, and so that's plus m. 
um, and so this is just um, equal to n. Uh, so we, have, we need L as being greater than or equal to n, um, and if we take the minimum case, we're going to take, uh, so the, the semi-proper D um, will take L equal to n. Um, and uh, so in this uh, example that we're considering then, um, we're going to increase our L up to 2. Okay. So if we shoot for that transfer function t of z, um, then we, uh, we plug that in our expression for, for d of z, um, and we have d of z um, is equal to um, a of z um, times g of z, which is b of z over b of 1, divided by um, b of z times z to the l minus g of z. Um, and so we can cancel this b of z and that b of z. So we get um, a of z over b to the 1 over um, z to the l minus g of z. So that's our um, x and y in this case. Okay, and so with that as our d of z, um, we can um, insert that into our expression for, uh, for su um, to figure out um, what the control is going to do. Um, and so we have um, a of z times y of z over, uh, and our y of z is just um, a of z over b of 1, and that's over um, a of z times um, x of z minus g of z. g of z is uh, b of z over b1. Checking right here. Um, and uh, let's see, so that's a of z times x of z plus b of z times y of z, and y of z is just um, a of z over b of 1. And so now we can, uh, let's see, we have a of z there, a of z there, a of z there. Um, I have minus b of z over b1 plus b of z over b1. So that term cancels with that term. And lo and behold, my su is now just a of z over b1 over z to the l. That's my su. And so, um, What I see in this case is that my control settles in finite time and my, uh, my reference output settles in finite time. And so now I'm in a much better position. So now I see that um, my L is increased by one, so it's gonna take two time steps to get there. So. Um, if I start here, I might have some intermediate value at, uh, at L is equal to 1, uh, at K is equal to 1, and finally at K is equal to 2, uh, which is L, that's going to be settled to the finite value, and thereafter it's settled. So it's going to take two time steps in this example to settle to, uh, to the final value instead of 1 in discrete time. But if I take a look at the control, um, my control is going to settle in, uh, in two time steps as well. So my control, I, again, my controller is semi-proper, so it's going to respond at the, uh, at the zeroth uh, time step. So it's going to hit it. Um, it's going to maybe hit it again. Um, and then at the um, second time step, so this is the first time step, at the second time step, um, and thereafter, um, it's going to have its final value. And the final value of the control might be non-zero here, so um, some value. Um, and so uh, it's in discrete time going to look like that, um, which if that's what our, our u is, our u sub k, um, then 
we hold that, this is what the zero order hold does to you, hold that, and then hold that one, hold that one, hold that one, hold that one. Uh, we see we're going to hit it, hit it, and then we get its final value. Um, and we see that the corresponding y um, now is not being excited by an oscillation in u, and so that allows us to then stick the landing. There is no um, excitation um, with an oscillating u in order to cause an intersample ripple. Okay, so that's uh, a ripple-free deadbeat controller. Uh, now let's take a look at these, uh, these restrictions. Um, in the minimum time deadbeat controller, we had the smallest possible value for L, um, but effectively what it did, if we take a look at D of Z, um, it inverted the dynamics of the plant. Um, and so we took our D of Z and we had A over B, so G times D had pull zero cancellations for everything going on in A and everything going on in B. So we needed all of the pulls, all of the um, roots of the denominator to be in the left half plane. And we also needed all of the zeros to be in the left half plane. Um, and so um, in order to, uh, to, to do that, we're doing pull zero cancellations of both all of the roots of the denominator and all the roots of the numerator. So I needed it to be stable, all of these roots to be in the left half plane, and minimum phase. I needed all of these roots to be in the left half plane. So we restricted, uh, in our uh, initial case, the minimum time deadbeat controller, which had this intersample ripple possibility. Uh, we needed uh, to be looking at a stable minimum phase system. Now in the ripple free deadbeat controller with, uh, with T of Z prescribed to be like this, if we take a look at the corresponding expression for D of Z, we have A of Z canceling out the A of Z in the, in the numerator there, but we're not canceling out the dynamics of, uh, of, of B of Z. So we need to have a stable G of Z, so we need all of the, uh, the roots of the denominator to be in the left half plane, but we do not need um, all of uh, um, the, the zeros the, the roots of the numerator to be in the left half plane because we're just doing pull zero cancellations of the A's but not of, as we had here, both of the A's and the B's. Um, and so all we needed here was a stable G of C. So now in the general case, um, we want to have a ripple-free controller in the general case. Um, so a ripple-free controller for general G of Z. So it might be unstable, it might be non-minimum phase. Um, we need to do something slightly different than this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my T of Z um, as being uh, equal to um, G of Z over Z to the L. Um, and um, I'm not going to um, prescribe G of Z. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna compute the controller. Uh, so I'm gonna compute a, uh, an internally stable controller using our general formula internally stable uh, controller um, D of Z uh, using the, uh, the, the formula that we've, uh, we've seen already a couple of times um, for the, the polynomial Diophantine equation. Um, so we're gonna have um, our A of Z, um, X of Z um, plus B of Z, Y of Z is equal to our f of z, and we're again going to prescribe f of z as being z to the l. Um, and so our denominator of t of z is going to be z to the l, but the denominator of all of those other sensitivities when we follow this approach is also z to the l. So we get settling in finite time. Um, and so we solve this, this is the polynomial Diophantine equation, um, so we can solve that, uh, and then that gives us our x and our y for a controller uh, by solving this polynomial Diophantine equation. Right? And so if we, uh, if we do this, well, let's just do it by hand here, um, just or, or argue about what needs to be done by hand. Um, and so this is uh, an, uh, an lth order polynomial over here, with all the later coefficients being zero. So we have L plus one coefficients of the powers of z's going on over here. Um, this is uh, a, a of z um, is an nth order polynomial over here, um, and x of z is an ith order polynomial, and these are presumably equal to the, the, the same degree or, or, or smaller. So what we need is, um, so, so we need uh, 
as high a degree over here as we have over there. So we need um, L to be equal to um, N plus I. And um, so if we match the coefficients of like powers of Z on this side and on that side, um, match um, coefficients of like powers of Z, of Z, um, what we need um, is as many degrees of freedom in X and Y um, as we have um, coefficients that we need to match from one side to the other. Um, and um, if X is an, uh, an ith degree polynomial, it has I plus one coefficients in it. Uh, and if it's semi-proper, Y has um, I plus one coefficients as well. So we have two times I plus one coefficients. Um, and we have um, L plus one uh, degrees of freedom. So um, we need at least this, um, or if we're uh, uh, strictly proper, we'll need more than this. So let, let's say 2i plus 1 greater than or equal to um, L plus 1. Um, and um, so let's see, let's go ahead and we have um, 2L, let's multiply this times 2. 2L is equal to um, 2N plus 2I. Um, I have 2I is equal to, or, or greater than or equal to, I can swing the that over to the other side. So 2I is this term right here um, is uh, greater than uh, or equal to L minus one. And so then uh, swing this over to the left hand side. So what we get is L is greater than or equal to um, 2N minus one. So in this case, I had um, L is equal to N. In this case, I had L is equal to N minus M. Um, in this case down here, I have L is equal to 2N minus 1. Uh, and so in the example that we're looking at, N was equal to 2. Um, and so uh, we need L as being 2 times 2 minus 1 is 3. Um, and so um, in, uh, in this case, we required L to be 1. Here, L could, had to be 2. And here, we're going to take one more step, L equals 3. But the nice thing about this approach is we can apply it to a problem which is, has uh, G of Z being either unstable or non-minimum phase or both. And so this works in general. Um, and uh, again, um, all of the sensitivities are going to have z to the l in the denominator, so everything settles in, in finite time, including um, the uh, um, r to u uh, transfer function. So u will settle in finite time, so we're not going to get any any oscillations. Um, and uh, in, in addition to to t, um, so um, sometimes uh, deadbeat controllers are criticized uh, because they're aggressive. So if you have a small time, you want to settle by hitting it. Uh, and then just sticking the landing. And, and so we're not going to allow ourselves to oscillate over a long period of time uh, in order to get to where, where we're going. Um, and so as you make the time step shorter, the magnitude um, of, the, um, of, of the strikes, if you like to call uh, the, the, the hits uh, that we're hitting the, the, the system with in, in order to wind up where we want to go in, in finite time, can get large. And so the secret about applying a, a, a deadbeat controller um, without being too aggressive is don't let the time steps get too small. Uh, and so if you want to settle on finite time, it's going to take a lot of energy unless you let your time steps to be maybe a little bit larger than you would otherwise. Um, and so then that brings the magnitude of this down. If you apply it in the general case, the system is going to be um, unstable between these time steps. Uh, and so the system uh, is going to uh, uh, be, be growing exponentially. Um, and so it in fact takes really large um, uh, hits by the control in order to uh, um, in order to settle in finite time in the case where you have an unstable G of Z. Um, but uh, you can still um, you can still get it to work in theory. And in, in all of these cases, you're going to need 
um, to have good modeling of the plant. If your model of G of Z is off in any of these cases, then you won't settle on finite time. And so there will be a little bit of error, um, and you'll work with your deadbeat controller to, to minimize that error afterwards. And so there actually will be a little bit of noise, uh, a little bit further oscillation as you, you clean up from, uh, from whatever error there was in your problem. Um, so uh, the idea of a, of a deadbeat controller is you've got to model your plant really well and take your time steps sufficiently large. Um, and especially in the, the ripple-free uh, Debbie controller for a stable G of Z, you have quite a nice controller. And so if you're pointing a telescope uh, and you don't want it to be exponentially decaying in there, but you want after finite time, boom, I want to start taking uh, my picture right now. Um, and then instead of having exponential decay, um, having a, uh, a controller which gets there um, essentially in finite time and, and holds it there um, is a very good sort of controller. And so for certain pointing type problems, um, the, uh, the, the ripple-free deadbeat controller uh, can really be a valuable tool in your arsenal. Um, and uh, it's interesting because in the previous part of this controls discussion, uh, for everything that we did in continuous time, there's a corresponding analog in discrete time, essentially. We had to make sure that uh, we kept all the oscillations um, within plus minus the Nyquist frequency. Uh, but as long as we had that, there, there was a strong correspondence. We had all of our design guides uh, in continuous time, mapped them over to discrete time. And so this is mapping back and forth. Um, but this is a concept um, in discrete time that doesn't really have an analog back in continuous time. And so this is a kind of a, a nice uh, benefit of being able to understand both discrete time and continuous time. It allows you uh, to do a finite time settling formulation, uh, which in discrete in, in continuous time might be uh, might be otherwise difficult to figure out.